I'm Thomas Hinton with ThomasHinton.com, and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. So today's question focuses around Python versus scale-up for freelancers. And so today we're going to tackle that question. So find out more right after this. So today's question comes in from our Big Data Big Question series. So if you have any questions, go to thomashinson.com, Big Data Big Questions, submit your questions. And so that's where today's is coming from. And so today, our question's coming in from Gil Tasso. So I hope I'm saying your name right. I hope I'm not mispronouncing it. So thanks for following and thanks for asking a question, Gil. So today, Gil's question is, I saw your video on learning how to become a data engineer. It was very interesting. Thank you, Gil. I subscribe to your Twitter and your YouTube channel. Well, thanks again. That's awesome. That's how you can make sure that you never miss an episode. So currently, Gil is a junior data engineer who works mainly with technologies like Impala and Hive with a little bit of Spark SQL. He said, I would like to improve my skills in Spark. I have intermediate skills in Python, but as I review the industry, it seems it's better to learn Scala, which is very tough, at least for me. Uh, do you think uh, it's better for me to sharpen my skills in Python or transition to Scala now? Also, I'm looking for ways to be a freelance data engineer in the short term, maybe two to three years, because I'm looking more for more flexibility. Do you have any advice to give me for training, skills, and technology? So, thanks for the question, Gil. That's actually a two-part question, I feel like. So, I feel like there's a couple different ways that we can look at it. First, the question is, for a junior data engineer, that's working um, really good, you know, intermediate skills in Python, but should you transition more to Scala? And then the second part of the question is, you know, what should you do for freelancing? So I think there's two different ways to look at it. So if, if we look at it, you know, in your current career, kind of where the industry's going, you know, is Python a viable option or should you start to do Scala or Scala? Or, you know, where, where, where's that market gonna be at for freelancing? Because I think those are two different things, right? You know, what you know what we see for freelancing and then what we see for, you know, industry and kind of in your career progression, and especially if you're in the Spark community, right? So it seems like you've got kind of hint, hinted around that you've been working with uh, Spark for a little while and starting to get into more of the Spark, and that's why you're starting to look at Scala. So let me break it down real quick. Um, First, you know, just my, my thoughts on Python versus Scala just in the industry. I think that, you know, with you saying that you have intermediate Python skills, I think if you're looking at Spark and that's what you're, you know, that's what you're really wanting to specialize a little bit more in, I don't think it would hurt you. I think it would be beneficial for you to start going ahead and, and looking into Scala and maybe doing some research there. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't push back and say, you know, I don't need those Python skills anymore. Both of them are interpreters. You know, you can both, you can wrote, write both those inside of Spark, so you're covered there. Um, there, is, there is a little more functionality, it seems like, and a more documentation around Scala. Part of it is because it's, you know, it's, it's expanding out that Java, so it you know, keeps a lot of people from having to write those Java jobs versus you know, just using the Scala interpreter or REPL or just using the functions there. Um, so I think you know, for, from, a, from where I see it, you know, and where you want to go, and especially with you being a junior, you know, saying that you're a junior data engineer, if you want to progress, I don't think there's a problem with you learning Scala. I just wouldn't say that you need to really jump to it now. And so it's hard for us to, you know, as, you know, as technologists, as engineers, as developers, you know, we love playing with new toys, right? So, you know, anytime there's a new language or a new tool, you know, a new, you know, kind of technology, you know, whether it be some kind of containerization with Docker, Kubernetes, or Mesos or Yarn, anytime there's something new, we always look at that and we're like, oh man, that's a shiny new object we wanna play with. And you know, what should we do from our, for our career perspective? I don't think that you have to go all in on Scala. I think that even with Python and where we see Python now, and I mean, just to look at the different open source projects and everything that's going on with Python, I think you're set there. One recommendation that I was given early in my career that I wanna pass along to you is you know being a junior engineer saying that you have immediate or intermediate uh, Python skills? What I would start to do is I would start to maybe start looking at specialization. So look at a couple different open source projects and maybe get involved that revolve around Python, and that can kind of help you build you know your your foundation, your portfolio, and yourself as a career. And you still have options, right? To you know take you know you've heard me talk about it before in the data engineer video you know, take 30 minutes, right? So take 30 minutes a day and, you know, maybe two to three times a week, mix in some Scala, you know, research in there. So that way you're learning it and you're starting to get it, but you're also still contributing to your Python skills, which, you know, like I said, you're at the intermediate 
phase, there's there's a way for you to specialize, right? Because it's I mean Python's a pretty big, uh, pretty big uh, language, and so there are different specializations that you can do. So I'll look at that. The second part of the question that's a little bit different, and I'm gonna have a different, a somewhat of a different opinion here, is you're asking about options for freelancing, right? So which which one which one should you focus on if you want to freelance? And so the way that I would look at that is there are three important things that I look at for freelancing, right? So if you're freelancing, you're focused on your brand, right? So that's how you get, that's how you're gonna get freelancing jobs. That's how you're going to be able to market yourself as a freelancer and continue to get that revenue there. And so that starts with specialization. So like I was talking about a little bit with Python and starting, starting to pick a specialization, I would really focus on it if that's what I wanted to do. If I wanted to get into freelancing, wanted to be a freelance data engineer, you really want to start focusing and start specializing. That's not to say that you're not going to pick up other skills and continue to learn those, but I think specialization, especially when you're new to freelancing, is going to be very, very important. Even more so important than you know, just in your current career where you're working maybe you know at your company. Um, you know, specialization is important there, but not as important as a freelancer. And so the second thing that's really big with freelancing is the market, right? So what is the total market need? And so just looking based off that. If you were looking and asking that question, say, hey, I want to be a freelancer, Python or Scala, it's going to be a lot more jobs uh, that are available right now, a lot more gigs to be able to get that are going to be revolve around Python. And I think that trend is going to continue. I don't think that uh, Scala is going to overtake um, that market. So, you know, even even segmented in the big data area, too. So even if we got outside of, you know, what's going on with the big data, um, you know, community, I think those jobs are still going to continue to be you know, maybe two to three times more uh, for Python uh, developers. So you're looking at the brand, you're looking at the market need, but then you're also, the third key for freelancing is your reputation. So being new, you're not gonna have a lot of uh, reputation, so what are some things that you can do to be able to get your name out there and also get, get involved in some jobs? And it's gonna go back to the open source. So I would look at some open source projects, maybe around the areas that you wanna specialize in and just get involved. And getting involved in those is just sometimes just as easy as you know, joining the user discussion list and maybe answering some questions there, or getting on the developer list and just maybe reading the emails and see how it's going. Because I'm telling you, you know, just getting on those email lists and seeing what's going on, and as you start to contribute on there, that's a great way for you to be able to, one, have code that you can point back to or you know, that you've been a part of the community, and then two, that helps your reputation so it's gonna be easier for you to find jobs. Like There's a lot of times that you'll see jobs or requests for podcast interviews or just a lot of different things that all come from that open source uh, email list. So I would get involved there. And then also too, another thing that you do, just being new to the area, of uh, freelancing is maybe you look for you know one of the gig one of the freelancing uh, places you know on online and start doing some of those jobs and a lot of times those jobs you know because you're just starting out they're going to be you know very competitive and you're going to you know maybe be doing it for ten or twenty bucks or thirty bucks thirty bucks an hour per project but that helps you build that portfolio and I wouldn't focus too much on being a part of that and saying that's going to be your revenue for freelancing but I think it's a great way for you to get started and start to see that. How, you know, how it works for freelancing, and if it's something that you're interested in too. So it'll build your, it'll help you build that reputation, but I think the open source uh, long-term is gonna really build that reputation for a lot longer than even you know, the gig sites and some of the other things. So um, three things for freelancing, um, definitely for that question around Python versus Scala, I would continue to focus on, on um, Python for your freelancing gig, because I think that's gonna be your fastest way to be able to you know, build that specialization. I think the market needs there, and then also, being able to you know brand yourself as well so um, that's uh, that's today's episode of big data big questions make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode also go if you have any questions for big data big questions uh, check it out uh, thomashinson.com I've got a place out there for you just fill it out I can answer any questions that you have so thanks again see you